Today we will demonstrate creative finishing techniques using General Finishes Pearl Effects, our specialty metallic paints. Pearl Effects can be painted or sprayed straight from the can for a solid color or thin to create specialty finishes. We like to add 5% extender for spraying and glazing and to improve open time and low humidity. Always use Pearl Effects over a sealed surface such as General Finishes Milk Paints, sealed water-based stains, water-based top coats, or any primer. Here are undiluted pearl effects sprayed. Argentine, bronze, burnished, champagne, copper, and tawny. This may be the look you want, but pearl effects lend themselves to much more interesting decorative applications such as dry brushing, stippling, marbling, and glazing. The first demonstration is dry brushing with only one Pearl Effects color. The first dry brush demo will be tawny over lamp black that's been sealed with high performance satin. I have my colors into the plate here. I'm just going to give a squirt of extender. And I want to condition a rag just so that I can get my brush wet. And I want a little bit of color. I don't want to use a lot. And this is really the key here. and just keep dabbing on very soft and subtle. And that's the key about dry. You can see it going on. You don't want a heavy wet film. You want to build color very soft. And as the brush gets charged with paint, you can just keep adding color wherever you'd like it. Just drag a little bit of color out. If you get too much on, just grab a damp cloth and kind of wipe it back. But you can see the color develop there. Yeah, it's really building. Yeah, it's very subtle. I like this. I think that's a very sophisticated look. There. And here are finished examples of one color of pearl effects dry brushed over milk paint completed with two coats of high performance satin. Tawny over lamp black. Champagne over Persian Blue, Argentine over Queenstown, and here is a completed table. The legs have been painted in Somerset milk paint and glazed with tawny. The top has been finished with Java gel stain with two layers of high performance satin. You can also dry brush multiple colors. In this demo, Tom will apply Argentine, copper, and tawny over two coats of lamp black milk paint sealed with high performance satin. Just like before, we're going to use the same techniques. Again, I want to use a little extender to kind of wet the colors out a little bit. I'm going to use a couple different brushes here because I'm starting with a different color. So drag a little bit of the Argentine silver and I want to blot it off. The key here is just keeping it really dry. The silver is a little stronger, so it'll, it'll show up quicker. You see that? That's a nice subtle layer of color. And like I said before, if you get too much, just take a damp cloth and wipe it right back off. And I'll follow it with my next color, which is the tawny. And I'm going wet on wet here. So I'm going to let the colors work together. And this adds a second dimension of color, which really will make those moldings and those routered edges jump off the surface there. These are great combinations of color. This has become my favorite finish here. See? And that extender just makes that color slide a little bit easier, if you can see that. Now I'm going to take a third brush. I just want to, again, wet out. I'm going to put a little bit of copper on here. Get my rag. And this is just dampens the brush so the brush isn't dry. A, a damp brush will pick up color and distribute it more uniformly. And I'll put that third color on there. Again, there it goes. See that going into the mm -hmm. grain there? Three different colors working together really create an unusual, real nice, subtle change of colors on your project there. I think that's really cool. It's gorgeous, Tom. Thank you. 
And here are finished examples of multiple colors dry brushed. Argentine and bronze over lamp black. Copper and tawny dry brushed over espresso water-based stain. Argentine and bronze over driftwood. And here's a hutch painted in lamp black and dry brushed with argentine, copper, and tawny. Next, we'll show two stippling techniques, also known as poncing. In the first, we will use a heavy additive stipple. Additive means painting on without removing any of the pearl effects. I'm going to do a stipple of argentine and tawny over two coats of driftwood gray milk paint sealed with two layers of high performance satin. And this one's just a little more aggressive application here. Again, I charge my brush, wet it out with a little extender. I'm going to take a little bit more paint now because I, I want some heavy application. And I'm just going to ponce the color onto the surface. The key is not to be too consistent. You want random. See, just a random application. And then I'm going to come back with my second color, which is going to be the silver, the Argentine silver. A little bit more, and that extender keeps my plate wet, which is kind of key here, because now I'm going to come back and add that secondary color and try and fill in the spots that you missed and let those two colors blend together. This is easy. There's really no rule per se, but it's just something that when you like the looks of it, you put the brush down. And that gives you a nice contrasting colors. Thank you, Tom. Here are examples of additive stipple. Argentine burnished and copper over Queenstown. Argentine over Queenstown. Copper and tawny over royal purple. For the next demo, we will use a subtractive stipple of copper, bronze, and tawny over brown mahogany water-based stain. The paint is applied and then removed with a brush, sponge, or towel to create a textured effect. Tom? For this demo, I'll be poncing three different colors together. And again, poncing is just the method of, I'll just wet this out a little bit. It's just a method of application. So I'm actually going to ponce the color into the wood right on the surface. And it's kind of a stiff up and down motion. You don't want to be dragging it. You want to make it look like it's been blotted on. So then I'll do my three different colors here. And again, a little extender becomes your best friend. All right, do a little bit darker color. Add to the background. It helps soften out that gold, which is a, a brilliant color. And then I'll come in with my third color, get my brush conditioned here. A little bit of copper. Copper is a real rich color, so it doesn't take a lot. You can see I'm leaving most of it off on the cloth. Well, that's good for product sales, Tom. Yes, it is. We'll make more. All right. And then the next step is I'm going to take just a, a clean cloth, something without a lot of texture or pattern. And I want to just come in and blot this and soften. Look at how those colors just kind of blend together. And then as a final step, I'll take a soft bristle brush and I'll come down and this is just a softening technique. It blends all those lines together so it looks like it's layers of color, almost like oxidation. There, that's cool. And here are finished examples of subtractive stipple. Tawny and copper over brown mahogany water-based stain. And Argentine, bronze, and burnished over Queenstown. And finally, you can mix pearl effects with our water-based top coats and glazes to produce a subtle look. We mixed one part high performance with one part burnished pearl effects. Chris? To start with, here's my brush du jour. It's from the Escoda Restore Collection. I like it because the handle is thinner, fits the hand really well, and it has a natural bristle, nicely rounded. So we're using this mix of uh, high performance and burnished, which I have in this jar. I'm just going to get it on the surface. And 
and you don't want too much. Even it out a bit. And come back and do a subtractive stipple technique. This will give that surface a really soft shimmer. You can take off as much as you want, but this technique is fabulous for any of your bright reds, bright greens, and bright yellows. Those colors are really designed for glazing, poncing, and stippling. Here are examples of water-based top coats and glaze effects intermixed with pearl effects. One part burnished, one part burnt umber glaze, four parts high performance over patina green. One part burnished, one part high performance over holiday red. One part burnished, one part high performance over emerald. And one part burnished, one part high performance over two parts Tuscan red and one part dark chocolate milk paint. Be sure to protect your beautiful work with two coats of top coat. And here's a quick tip to extend the life of your brushes. It's real important when you're done painting using the pearl effects or any product, clean your brushes right away. Don't let that paint dry because it becomes more difficult to clean your brush. And it's an investment. The brushes will last you a lifetime if you take care of it. So you can see how quickly it rinses out. I'll blot it off on my rag. But for storage, because what happens with water, the brushes have a tendency to flare, I'll roll my brush in my cotton cloth and that helps keeps the shape of the brush. Just squeeze it out a little bit. So when I'm done with it, I can keep the taper on my brush. It's a nice natural bristle. It's going to last you a lifetime. Aaron's Tips. Apply pearl effects over sealed surfaces only, such as top coat, milk paint, or primer. Always seal pearl effects with top coat. Dry time to touch, two to four hours. Dry time to recoat when using as a paint, 12 hours. Dry time to recoat when thinned as a glaze, two to four hours. Our finishes are engineered to be compatible with each other. Test to your satisfaction when using with other brands. And there you have it, creative ways to use pearl effects. More ideas can be found at General Finishes Design Center at designs.generalfinishes.com. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel.